a certain enchanted forest is inhabited by talking birds. Given any birds A and B, if you call out the name of B to A, then A will respond by calling out the name of some bird in the forest. We will call this A's response to B, or AB. Generally, A's response to B is not necessarily B's response to A. Or, we can say, AB doesn't need to be BA. Given the birds A, B, and C, if you call out the name of C to bird AB, you get AB's response to C. And if you call out the name of the bird BC to A, you get A's response to BC. The bird M is called the mockingbird because for any bird X, the mockingbird calls out the response of that bird when it hears its own name. So if B hears B, it will respond with BB. And if M hears B, it will also respond with BB. If A hears A, it responds AA. If M hears A, it responds AA as well. Given three birds, A, B, and C, not necessarily distinct, they might be the same birds essentially. The bird C composes if C's response to any bird is the same as A, open parentheses, BX, close parentheses, or A's response to B's response to X. For instance, if a bird G is called to B, B responds with BG, and when A hears this response, A responds with A's response to BG. And when C hears G, it also responds with A's response to BG. With this grammar and axioms, you can tackle the puzzles in Raymond Smullyan's To Mock a Mockingbird, 